All right, so real quickly, just before we begin, I felt like it'd be a good idea just to kind of go over some of the things coming up. Uh, so today, we were, Andrew was supposed to come in at 9, but he was uh, he just told us he has some stuff to do this morning. But he'll be in around noon, so you'll have me, Mike, and Andrew available to help uh, either in person or remote. Tomorrow, uh, at the request of uh, some of the students, we have uh, Delta Platoon coming in. Th I think two or three, at least two of them, perhaps three of them, um, are going to come in and talk to you about their experience and what they've learned and some survival tips and so on and so forth. Um, we'll have Beyond Tech number two, <coughs> dealing how to deal with feeling stuck all the time. Um, that'll be on Thursday, and then we'll have our first assessment on Friday. Um, this first assessment is really just a gauge for us to see where you're at in more of a formalized setting. Um, it's going to be probably just give you the morning to work on it. We'll do a retro real quick, and then I'll give you about, what, like four hours to finish. Uh, you're going to take lunch during that time, and then you'll have a weekend project with uh, either, if you're in person, it'll be all in person people. If you're remote, it'll be all remote folks. Uh, since there's four and four, it makes it really, really easy. Um, let's see what else there is. Uh, yeah, just a lot of stuff to look forward to next week. We have career prep part one, so we're going to start working on like behavioral questions and things like that because I know for some folks, uh, you haven't had a ton of it, ton of experience interviewing in a in a you know civilian job setting, so we're gonna start working on that, getting LinkedIn set up, and all of, all of that fun stuff. Uh, but thanks. First things first, let's work on uh, some review for from recursion, and we're specifically we're gonna solve the binary search that we didn't get a chance. A lot of people didn't get a chance to get to last night. So uh, what's going on with this? Why is this taking so long to load? Okay. Seems like my computer is dying. out a few things. <clears throat> it is snowing, so I'm going to assume that that plays a part in it. Oh, yesterday was Monday. So let's get started on this one. All right, so I'm going to change it to my desktop, and I'm going to clone something, clone something down called binary search. And binary search is an interesting algorithm. Um, the idea is I give you an ordered list of things, you know, there. So it's like a bunch of numbers that could range from one to like as many as you want, and you're supposed to find me more or less a needle in a haystack. If I, if it's numbers one to like 50 million and some numbers are missing in between I told you to find me the index of um, a particular number let's say it's like 42 million or something like that where is that number in that giant haystack of stuff so let's uh, CD into binary search open up the sublime Let's kind of read what we've got here. All right, so the goal of binary search is to find the index of a past value, in val past in value compared to an array of strings or integers. So if I gave you um, the numbers one to 10,000 and chose a sample of 1,000 of them and sorted them, that means I get a random sample of just 1,000 numbers between one and 10,000. Uh, we're going to be looking for just a random uh, random number in between. Let's 
Let's open this up. Now, the idea, uh, let's say I was, um, this is kind of similar to, I, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but you, uh, it's similar to like a kind of like a dictionary search. Let's imagine you have this enormous, enormous dictionary. When you were a kid, they were really big, but let's pretend it was like this, this thick. This dictionary was this thick. And I told you to find me a, um, a letter, uh, let's say look for the word um, computer. You would know, uh, let's say let you just, you didn't know the alphabet or anything like that. You just opened it. Actually, you know the alphabet, but and you don't know how dictionaries work. You open it right in the middle, and let's say you get a random letter M, right? At that point, you would know you've gone too far because M comes after C, right? At that point, you know, that, so at that point, I have half the book that I can search through. So if I split it up in, in the middle again, I get the letter F or something like that. I know I've still gone too far because I've, uh, because I C is because C is less than F in the in the giant dictionary. Then when I have uh, then when I have F, I have the letters A through F, and it's like a smaller subset yet again. And I open it right in the middle, and I end up at C. All right, now I'm at a place where I can start looking a little bit more closely. But the idea is like I, I started off with this very very huge dictionary's worth of stuff, A through Z, you know, a million words. I have split it right in the middle. I ended up with, you know, M. M was too big, so I split that into a smaller subset, and it's just kind of like I'm shrinking my my, I'm shrinking it in half. That's the idea, and the the whole idea behind like computers is you try to make things as efficient as possible. So if you if I gave you, let's say you were looking for like a needle in a haystack and you did a linear search, so you went one by one by one, wouldn't that take kind of like forever? Imagine if you were, I don't know what's it. Is that my machine that's making that so sound? No, it's it's the uh, it's a projector. Okay. Imagine if you were looking for a large subset of people, like a, like one, let's say one particular person inside of uh, inside of Chicago, right? You're looking for a, like let's say a criminal. You're the you're the police. You're looking for one criminal. What's the least efficient way of doing it? Walking door to door, knocking on the door and saying, are you this person? No. Are you this person? No. Next door down. Are you this person? Are you this person? And this is saying that everyone is in a fixed location. But you can find some demographics and you can say like, last, he, was la he or she was last seen at this part of the city. Great. This whole city that's nine, 13 miles long or nine miles long? Uh, let's say it's nine miles long has now shrunk to like a, like a, like a one mile, one square mile radius. And then from there, like, oh, we saw them at the at the Mariano's or something. It's like, oh, now I can just ask, now I can like shrink down that thing rather than going for nine miles asking door to door, are you this person, are you this person, are you this person? So that's kind of what's going on with the binary search. I have a giant list of numbers. I'm looking for one specific number in that giant list of numbers. So what we'll do is we'll split it right down the middle. We'll take a look at the index right in the middle and say like, is this the number? If so, then we're done. We can just return the index, we're finished. If it's not the number, if it's, let's say, it's a, le a smaller subset, then great, we, o we can throw out the, the right half of it and just deal with the left half. I can just do zero up until that midpoint number, and I split it again, and I keep doing it until I find it. Does that kind of make sense to, to folks of how the binary search works? I'm, I'm basically splitting it in half until I get down to the number. So I'll give you a chance to read through this uh, real quick. Here's the basic premise of the algorithm. You're looking for a value t and a set, cert, set a search set of values. Find the middle value and values that we'll call m. If t is less is t, if t is equal to m, then your new target is found. If t is less than m, your new search is half of the values before m. And if t is greater than the midpoint, your new search is going to do the the greater half of it. Let me so can someone pass me one of those uh, uh, whiteboards in the back real quick. Actually, no, I don't need a whiteboard, it's fine. Uh, thanks.
say you had this particular, um, can everyone see this both in screen and in person, uh, remote and in person? Let's say you had this particular list. So I'm, I'm looking for the number 14 in a sorted list of, list of, uh, of numbers. Now, obviously, we can see it's right here, right in the middle. But actually, let me just choose a, a slightly larger number. Let's do uh, 34. So this number right here. You have to tell me what the index it is of that point. Now, obviously, in such a small, like I think there's only like nine numbers in here, so it's not too big, not too big of a deal. You can obviously just go one by one until you get here. But if this thing was like 5,000 numbers, 10,000 numbers, or something like that, it becomes much more difficult to sort. So the idea behind it is I'm going to split it right down the middle. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. So I'm going to split it right down the middle and choose the number right at the middle, which is going to be 14. If 34 is less than 30, 14, then we'll take the first half. If this is greater than the midpoint number, we'll take the second half. So obviously, we get to the middle. It's 14. 34 is greater than 14. So we, we've already kind of dumbed it down. We only need to worry about this particular half. So I have 14, 18, 27, 34, and 37. Split it right down the middle again. It's a 27. This 34 is obviously greater than 27, so I do it again. 34 with 27, 34, and 37. Split it right at the middle. 34 is equal to 34. We found, we found the number that we're dealing with. We just have to kind of keep track of how many we've like jumped upwards. But you can kind of see like I've started off with a large subset of numbers, and I split it, and I split it, and I just keep splitting it until I get down to the down to the end. <clears throat> Any questions on that? The use of this is to save time. The use of this is to save time. So you know that uh, you know you have like built-in dot sort methods that can sort an array for you. It's like there's somebody wrote the code that's that's underneath that. Um, this could be what the code that's written underneath it. There's many different uh, so sorting algorithms. The, I mean, I, there's some. I think they're most likely using something called quick sort. But quick sort could take something from, could take like concepts from here. So the idea is some you want to sort as quickly as possible, and someone has written that code for you, so you could just call it dot sort, and it works. Um, but yeah, this is probably some something similar to this is what's powering it underneath. The, because if I were to sort it using one by one, it's like, is this great? Is this this number? Is this this number? Is this this number? And so on and so forth. It takes forever. So I just want to, I just want to search it real quick and just say like, I'm gonna split. I'm gonna take a huge set, split it in half, split it in half, split it in half, and keep splitting it in half until I get to the, to the very end. <clears throat> So let's, uh, let's start typing out some pseudocode. We'll translate it into real code. Most of this has actually already been written for us. So let's just grab it and see what happens. All right, here's the basic premise of the algorithm. All right, number one. Define a method called binary search. Well, I need another keyboard. Um, do me a favor. Can you grab me the keyboard in the back over there? This one here. Yeah, that that one. And then there.